back in 2013, uh, was a part-time MBA student at University of Maryland Smith School and uh, took Ben's class of FedTech and uh, went through the process of uh, i -Corps and working with the Naval Research Laboratory and Dr. Brandy Johnson on a technology that she had invented uh, which had to do with chem bio gear and worked through the whole i -Corps process and at the end of the process determined that there was a place for her technology to be brought out of the military and into the general public. And uh, at the end of the class uh, began a process of actually licensing the technology from the Naval Research Laboratory. Uh, it was a, a long road in the beginning and initially uh, I, had, I had some success in getting funding from Department of Homeland Security and TEDCO. When was this? Uh, this was about 2014. And so they had actually given me $75,000 to uh, continue the process of validating the technology uh, and for purposes of dual purposes, so inside the military and outside the military, and also to help me get on my path and further along towards actually having a license on the technology. Well, Scientific uh, acronym for it is FOM, and Dr. Johnson invented it for the war in Iraq uh, as a way of... Uh, enhancing J-List uh, personal protective equipment. And so for those who don't know, J-List is essentially the gear that you will see people wearing for um, hazardous situations. So anytime there's a hazard that has to do with uh, biological warfare or chemical warfare, soldiers and first responders will have to put on special gear. So Dr. Johnson invented her technology as an enhancement for that type of technology, excuse me, for that type of material, because what was happening was people who were wearing those materials were overheating and were just generally uncomfortable while they were wearing it. So her technology is something that coats fabric, and once it coats the fabric, it gets heated, and then it actually changes the chemical properties of the material. So it could literally be my pants that I'm wearing here, or, or like my shirt, I could coat it with FOM, and then once it's been heated, uh, it's actually uh, chemical resistant. And so for Dr. Johnson, it started back in 2006, uh, because we were still heavily involved in Iraq. Uh, not that, that we're not still there, but there was a, a big effort for people to come up with technology that had to do with uh, the J-List gear that people were wearing. So when I started the FedTech process, uh, it was very interesting to me because the, the scientific method was presented to me as a way to figure out, okay, you have your hypothesis, now figure out what this technology can actually be used for. From day one, I had all sorts of different ideas for how I could use the technology because essentially the material that we're talking about could be used almost in any type of process. For me, in the beginning, I remember starting with the first business model canvas and thinking that I could take the material and coat things like wine corks to prevent uh, wine taint. I was thinking of coating baby diapers to prevent certain things from happening with, with odors and chemicals there. Uh, there was even uh, an idea of using it for, fil for actual filters in buildings. And the, the fact is, is that it could still be used for any one of those things, but none of those things made sense for what we were trying to do in terms of commercialization. So what ended up happening was over the course of about, I guess it was eight weeks when we started, uh, we came to the conclusion um, based on many iterations of the canvas that we wanted to stay in the personal protective equipment industry, which also goes back to that original uh, idea that Brandy had come up with when she was working with the J-List mop gear. So uh, the, the project was called JTTI, which was the Joint Technology Transfer Initiative. And it was a joint project between Homeland Security and TEDCO. And uh, for those who don't know, TEDCO is a, is a resource that the state provides. It's more or less a, a funding source, but also a, a, um, they help entrepreneurs and, and tech companies uh, come up with uh, different ways of scaling their product or even just kind of addressing new industries. So after I got that uh, award, which was very helpful in terms of keeping you know, the lights on and paying the bills, what it also did was it opened up uh, a lot of different uh, sections or departments within the DOD that were now interested in what we were doing. So Dr. Johnson had a lot of people looking at her technology from the Navy, 
but the point of the JTTI was to make sure that other branches of the military were also looking at it. So as soon as we got that money, we started talking to the Army, which again, joint technology transfer, so that was the joint part. We had Homeland Security, the Navy who invented the technology, and then we started working with the Army because we needed someone to validate that the technology actually worked. So I only at that point had a provisional license, so I did not have a fully executed license. But what I was able to do was use a significant amount of those funds to pay for uh, the transfer of the FOM material as it was coded on actual fatigues and give it to the Edgewood, uh, Edgewood Chemical and Biological Center. And so that process, um, it was about 12 to 14 months worth of testing that they did over at Edgewood. So it went from DC over to Maryland. And while that was going on, there was a lot of waiting um, but I continued down, down the journey of actually licensing, or excuse me, executing a full license on her product. And um, ultimately what we came up with was August of 2016, uh, we were able to sign a fully executed license for the FOM product. So uh, we had some good news in the last month uh, by winning something called the Proof Challenge. And the story behind it is actually kind of interesting. Um, my one big thing that I always try to drive home is to always be promoting uh, the product yourself and also kind of the mission. And one day I got a text message from a friend of mine that said I needed to go visit this soccer website that he was a follower of. And uh, I didn't understand what it had anything to do with, but the soccer site that he followed had actually tweeted out a link to a challenge that the U.S. military was putting on that had to do with chem bio mop gear. So he knew because of all the times that I had just been talking about my process and what I was doing that I was the right person to be looking at this. So I looked at it and said, this is absolutely a contest that we want to enter. And turns out uh, we did. And that was back in September of 2016. So that was actually only a month after we had our license with the, with the uh, U.S. Navy. And we waited. And we finally got the word uh, back in January of 2017 that we were actually um, one of three winners of the whole thing. And so it was very interesting because what that did for us was it obviously gave us a cash influction, uh, which was nice. We won $60,000. And then we also were able to be put in contact with all the judges that were judges on the contest. Uh, what's happening now is a couple things. So with this money we were, we were given, um, you know, we, we gave them a plan on what we wanted to do with it. And uh, we also told them kind of partners that we wanted to have as well. So now we're actually talking to the two other winners of the contest because both of them, uh, there's, there's a way for, for all of us to actually collaborate, which is very nice. Um, two of the judges are, are talking to us about working with us and helping us and I'm actually supposed to talk to one of them in like 30 minutes. And uh, the last thing that we're going to be doing is actually scaling the product. So we're taking the, uh, the, the FOM product, which I call gray matter, and we're taking it from a very small quantity, which was designed in the lab, to now a much bigger batch. And we're, we're basically determining that we're, we're trying to determine if we can take that small scale uh, amount of the product and make a larger batch if it still has the same properties as it did when it was in a smaller batch. So that's just part of the process of getting the, the product into mainstream. Um, it's part of the whole technology readiness ladder. And uh, some people will say that we're at about a six, but until we're actually able to be taking our technology and coat a full ensemble, uh, we will be at that level. But this will hopefully be a big step in getting us to that point so that we can actually sell the full suit. Well, So right now I would say our ask is to uh, partner up with um, a client that could uh, potentially be interested in purchasing or acquiring a uh, small quantity of full ensembles. So it could be someone in the military, it could be uh, a police department, it could be a fire department, but someone who has kind of a forward-looking look approach and will actually um, try to integrate new technologies for chem bio gear. Um, other than that, we're also looking for potentially a, um, a value-added reseller. So some people call it a VAR. Um, 
in the in the near future it's our intention to actually manufacture the gray matter material um, but we never really want to make clothing so what we'd love to do and ideally what we can find in the next 12 months is someone that actually makes the mop gear or they make the military fatigues and they want to figure out a way to actually improve those materials with that they could buy gray matter materials from us integrate it into their existing technology or potentially sub-license the technology from us to use it in their existing technology.